So hello everyone. I'm Pradnesh. I'm a pre-final year undergrad studying engineering physics at IIT Roorkee, and I'm delivering a presentation on the topic 2D computer numerical control plotter using the 8085 microprocessor as a part of the coursework PHN 314 microprocessor and peripheral devices course taught by Professor Mayank Goswami from the Department of Physics, IIT Roorkee. So uh, throughout the course of the presentation, I'll be covering the following topics. First, I will provide an overview of the CNC process. Then I'll explain the workflow of the custom uh, CNC plotter that I've developed. I'll explain the components that I've used, the mechanical and the electronics aspects. I'll focus a bit on the stepper motor and the servo motor part. I'll explain how the interfacing is done with the 8085 microprocessor. Finally, I'll explain all the assembly controller codes and uh, give a summary of the entire presentation. So starting out with CNC, CNC basically stands for computer numerical control and it is a manufacturing process in which pre-programmed computer software dictates the movement of factory tools and machinery. So the process can be used to control a range of complex machinery from plasma cutting to uh, electronic discharge machining as we can see out here. So CNC basically consists of a motorized movable platform which gets actuated depending upon the instructions delivered in the form of a sequential program of machine control instructions. So in this case, I've tried to develop a two-dimensional plotter which is basically sort of a printer that uses a sketching device such as a pen making use of the concepts of CNC machines. So this plotter is capable of drawing scanned text or images on a given flat solid surface and by upgrading the control logic, it can be further improved to execute a wide variety of complex tasks as I will discuss later. So out here you can see an industrial prototype of a CNC uh, plotter uh, that has already been developed. We can see the mechanical assembly basically consists of various shafts then there are several motors that work in a synchronized manner to move the entire assembly along the x, y and the z axis. In my case I am using two stepper motors to provide the x, y plane translation and one servo motor to actuate the lifting mechanism of the pen along the z-axis. So here's a brief summary of the workflow executed by the plotter. First, whatever image or pattern that the machine is supposed to plot is scanned on a remote PC using OpenCV techniques. Then the Bresenham's line algorithm is used to convert the pixel coordinates into steps which are fed into the servo motor as command in step 3 using the serial port. And once the control loop for the servo motors has been executed, the pen including the entire assembly has reached the target position. And then the servo motor is actuated which pushes the pen downwards and initiates the plotting process. So these two steps of servo and the uh, stepper motors work in synchronization to trace out the uh, desired pattern. Now as far as the components are concerned, I have used two stepper motors as described uh, earlier to move the system in XY plane one servo motor then the 8085 microprocessor is used to execute all the control logic to prepare the control circuitry for the stepper motor the following ICs will be used so there is the address latch enable buffer decoders PPIs I'll explain how all these are connected in the coming slides for the servo motor control uh, PWM logic is used so for that a timer IC will be required and the rest of the components such as the capacitor, resistors, etc. Uh, will be used while making connections between the motor and the other components to protect the circuitry. As far as the mechanical components are concerned, a uh, rack and pinion sort of mechanism as we can see here uh, is used for the servo motors so that it can provide the perpendicular uh, force on the surface and the stepper motor shafts are uh, directly connected to the assembly ends. So coming back to the original workflow, first the input image is processed using OpenCV. So as you can see in this uh, block of code, uh, after converting the original image to binary grayscale image, contours are extracted and after taking average of around 30 values, the pixels are indexed and added in the list. So this becomes the uh, target uh, image coordinates list. Then the Bresenham's algorithm is implemented which selects uh, the next pixel which has the least distance from the true value. So say if P1 and P2 are scanned initial and the target pixels then a curve fitting is done by assuming a straight line which is converted into the number of steps for the stepper motor by multiplying with the separation dx and dy as we can see in this pseudocode. So all this computing is done on a remote PC and is then sent as input to the microprocessor 8085 
via the serial port as the buffer. Coming to the stepper motor component, so a stepper motor is basically a device which rotates through fixed angular steps when digital inputs are applied. And depending upon the type of the step sequencing that is used, it can either rotate uh, through 0.9 degrees in case of half stepping and 1.8 degrees in case of full stepping. So in my case, I have written the assembly code assuming full stepping. Following is the circuit uh, diagram for interfacing stepper motor with 8085 microprocessor which performs the three steps that are mentioned here. So first the lower order uh, of the 8-bit address A0 to A7 is separated from the AD0 to AD7 using the address latch enable buffer and the ALE signal. The separated address lines A0 to A7 are connected to the uh, A0 to A7 uh, pins of the 8255 which is basically a PPI that is a programmable peripheral interface uh, it's basically an input output device and the separated data bus D0 to D7 are connected to the D0 to D7 uh, pins of the 8255 then the reset of the 8085 is connected to the reset pin of the 8255 now uh, 8255 it does not have its own internal control logic generator so the input output, uh, the read write control signals are not directly connected to the 8255. So these pins are first given to the decoder and decoded using the 3 to 8 decoder and the generated control signals uh, connected to the uh, input of the uh, 8255 in the step 2. Finally an active low signal of uh, chip select logic is obtained uh, decoding the remaining address lines of the lower addresses A2 to A7. After this interfacing between 8085 and the 8255, a current uh, driver circuit is used which splits into four corresponding loops of the stepper motor. Now talking about the servo motor, so a servo is basically a combination of motor, a shaft, a gear assembly, an amplifier and an encoder. So it is a self-contained electrical device that rotates a machine or parts of a machine with very great precision and high efficiency. So by controlling the position and the speed of the shaft, we can control the angle of the shaft with respect to stationary parts. So the servo basically consists of a normal uh, DC motor, in this case we, I have used a DC motor with a positional sensor uh, which uh, is governed by a control uh, circuit such as an edge bridge. The positional sensor is a transducer that converts angular position to electrical pulses. So these pulses are sent through the amplifier and they are also called as actuating signals. So since the operation takes place in a closed loop, these actuating signals provide input to the feedback mechanism to, the, uh, to control the rotational or the linear speed and the position of the shaft of the motor. Now PWM that is pulse width modulated signals are used to control the DC servos. So in PWM, the width or basically the duration of the pulse signals decides the angle of rotation or the angular position of the shaft. So here is a figure which represents uh, the pulse width to the rotational angle conversion. So to rotate the motor from its initial 0 degree orientation to say 180 degree orientation, we change the pulse width from 1 millisecond to 2 milliseconds which is achieved by using the 8253 timer IC. So out here I would try to summarize the timer level that should be selected to generate the PWM signals of specific bits. Since we use the 16-bit uh, mode of the timer IC, we have 65536 possible values. Now to generate say 1 millisecond that is 1000 microsecond pulse, we use this conversion and add 1 to it following the extra transition of the timer from uh, 0000 to FFFF. So finally, uh, FC19H is the data that is set in the timer IC, FC being the higher order and 19 being the lower order address. Similarly for say 1.5 millisecond pulse, we will replace this value and we will finally get F831H as the initial level of the timer. So a pulse of uh, 1 millisecond corresponds to the motor, the servo motor and effectively the pen being lifted up. A rotation of 180 degrees moves the pen downwards and the pattern is traced on the paper. So we also have to provide an extra uh, delay when uh, the switching between these uh, different modes, the 0, 90 and the 180 degree angles takes place. Finally, here is the assembly code for the stepper motor controller. So first we initialize the stack pointer and the 8255. 
this output this out uh, operation it uh, basically corresponds to the control read write signals then we initialize the four step sequence send the data to port a increment the lookup table decrement the step count now in case the count is not zero we go into loop 2 and then uh, repeat the counting operation for further rotation of the motor using uh, the loop 1. So in this program, uh, in the lookup table, if the four step sequence is for clockwise movement, then the stable motor will rotate in clockwise direction and vice versa. The code for the servo motor is the same for a DC motor with the pulse waveform generation uh, using the logic that I mentioned in the earlier slides. So uh, in this way, using a combination of steppers and servos and making use of precise uh, controlling uh, capabilities of these motors, a low cost, low power, custom 2D CNC plotter is developed, powered by the 8085 microprocessor. It can be used for a variety of applications such as carving figures onto solid surfaces where manual operation might not produce the desired effect and it usually requires good craftsmanship skills. Similarly, by further improving the control logic by making use of PID or other control algorithms, the device can be extended to be used for more critical operations such as laser cutting, etc. provided suitable modifications are made in the mechanical assembly as well. So, hope you like uh, this presentation. This was it from my side. Thank you.